like I know it. I'ma get high as hell. I'm a little bit unholy. So what does everyone else? Such a good song. I love Miley. <laughs> um, I don't know who's lined up to see me just yet, but I am sure people will start pouring in soon. I don't know who else will join us. I have told my crew that I will be live streaming. Um, so if people join, people will join. But for the moment, hey, welcome to the live stream and Eid Mubarak. It is Eid today for Shias, it's Eid tomorrow and some other countries, I'm sure. Um, but I'm I'm here. I'm very emotionally exhausted uh, from the last two days. It's been, so let me cover that before we go into anything else. Like, let's get the bad news out of the way before we move on to the fun stuff. Um, it was two days of full drama. Um, a lot of people were angry. A lot of people were upset. A lot of people made a lot of accusations that I am not happy about. Um, I was doxxed once. Someone leaked where I worked. Uh, ironically, given the context of the leaking. Um, and another person asked for their money back. Or they like deeply regretted once giving me £20. So I had to issue a refund. Because the last thing I would want is for someone, you know, really really thinking that they could buy my opinion um so that's all the tea on that i refuse to cover any more of it than that um but yeah we're gonna have just some relaxed chill time i mean i started this video with uh karaoke uh we might move back to that because i have my last bit of wine before i have to go out and go shopping again um and we might do some fun little drinking and company and live streaming. Saf might join us later, but she has informed me that she is extremely full. Um, so I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to pressure her to do anything. I'm pretty sure she's going to need a nap because she's eaten herself into a coma because it is Eid. And I genuinely hope that everyone who is celebrating today, and you should all be celebrating, uh, anyone who is celebrating today is having a good time. Ramadan could not have been easy for anybody non-Muslims, ex-Muslims, Muslims alike, it, it, you know, especially with COVID-19, Ramadan is meant to be family time, Ramadan is meant to be like, it's meant to be an, maybe not an easy time, but it's meant to be like a family time, and I understand how that could have been difficult this year, so I really, really hope that everybody's pulled through and everybody's enjoying their indoor Eids uh, today. Um, before we dive into what we're doing today and what I have planned for today. I don't have much planned, but we'll figure it out. Um, welcome Ahmed09 and welcome Sirius Duffer. Uh, actually, I have an episode coming out on Sirius Duffer's channel in June um, because we recorded that yesterday and that is why I was not in the live chat for yesterday's video and I think a lot of people got quite upset with me because I wasn't in yesterday's live chat video. <laughs> It's my channel, I run it how I want. I'm not saying it works, but I do run it how I want. Um, anyways, uh, that's all the news that I can think of to put out. There has been a little bit of drama, but today is not drama day. Today is trying to relax as much as possible. <laughs> oh no, serious stuff, you do not need to apologize. Um, it is not it, it's it's just a reaction I never thought I would have for not being in the live chat. So I don't think it's anybody's fault. Um, I just did not know that I needed to re-watch all of the videos that I had to record, edit a few times, and then also upload. Um, I just did not think that that was something that I needed to do. But, um, you know, you don't need to apologize for that. Um, it's it's kind of on brand for me to make people angry, so that's all good. Uh, a few weeks ago, or about a week ago, as a few weeks ago, I had posted a a tweet and I had said, "What are some assumptions you have about me?" And I've been collecting them from that time. Um, Zara stole my idea, so we might go through some of the assumptions that people have about her as well. 
Uh, but I would like to go through some assumptions that people have left about me. And if you have any, please do feel free to leave some in the live chat. And what, what I mean, I think a lot of people were like, well, we don't like to make assumptions. Everybody makes assumptions, whether you like it or not. Everyone makes assumptions. So I would like to know what my first impression for people is. Like, what are things you think about me that I may or may not have as a quality in and of myself? I would like to know because I think it's interesting. And I think that people's perceptions of me, even if I don't necessarily change because of what I am perceived as, I still find it extremely interesting. Um, so we're going to do that. And then we might move into something funner we might invite other people in i've sent out a link to a few of my friends who may be joining but we will see because sometimes they're not the most um sometimes they're just, just not ready to jump on a live stream whenever which is very much my schedule um so the first one we have is from shmarina shmande who she's a regular on my channel um and he said, my first impression impression of you was that you were a cold-hearted bitch and also super intimidating. <laughs> and then to add insult to injury, Zara K responded to him by saying, what makes you think the above isn't true? Now, um, for most of my life, I've wanted to be cold-hearted and intimidating, at least outwardly. And I think it stems from like all of the fictional characters that I really, really like. Um, for example, one of my, my favorite superhero of all time is Wolverine and he has like that image of being, well, he is extremely intimidating. Um, and I, I so desperately always wanted to be that, like I idolized that to an extent. Um, I never thought that I would be upset by saying by hearing that someone close to me thought that <laughs> I honestly don't think that I come off as intimidating I can be intimidating because I work with children um I can, uh, and I've you know that's been something that I've done throughout my life you know I have five younger siblings and that's something that I've learned is how to be firm and how to be an absolute child myself um but I had never thought here and now that I was cold-hearted or um you know super super intimidating and I'm kind of proud of it that I have a reputation um not going to completely lie but there's like a part of me also that I don't think I cultivate that image I try to cultivate an image of you know I'm an asshole but I'll listen to your problems especially if you put a drink in my hand um if that I don't know if that's better or worse uh, but I did actually ask uh, Shmariana, and that's becoming a very frustrating name to say, um, I did ask him what he meant by that. And he said, well, before I appeared on your channel and then we became best friends, um, I didn't know, like I was super, super nervous to first talk to you. And I did not consider that for a second. Like I never thought anybody would be afraid to talk to me. If anything, I would be afraid to talk to other people. Um, because I'm very, I, I don't care what comes out of my mouth and I turn a lot of people off. Um, and the amount of, I don't know why I have abandonment issues. I'd be so, I should be so bad because there's so many people in the world that have just left <laughs> because of something I've said. Um, because I really, really don't care what comes out of my mouth sometimes like I definitely put thought into what I say but not necessarily how I say it um so yeah um serious stuff is self-deprecating yeah it's the best kind of humor <laughs> it's the best kind of humor um welcome a Sharipov. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly but thank you uh welcome to the channel I hope you're having a good time we're just having a fun little conversation um the next uh, assumption that, well, it's the same assumption, but it's another one of my close friends who said it. Um, so Saf, Saf.com, he's also been on my channel quite a bit. And um, we've grown closer and closer in the lockdown because we play a lot of games and we have a lot of, a lot of little mother's meetings uh, in lockdown where we talk about cute boys or cute girls. Um, she commented under my tweet by saying, you were super intimidating and very artsy and I wanted to be your pal. Well, we are pals now, girl. We have a plan for living together once this COVID business is done. Um, so that's definitely organizable. But like, 
again, like, do I come off as super intimidating? Is that what my reputation is? Because I kind of want to keep it that way. I kind of want to build on it. Um, I just don't want anyone to approach me, especially like I, I love making acquaintances. I love meeting people and hearing their stories. And I, I have a habit of collecting acquaintances. Um, you want to know more about that? Uh, wait for serious stuff as po uh, podcast live stream to come out because we we kind of go into depth about that. But I do tend to make a lot of acquaintances. Um, but when I'm walking around alone or I'm spending time alone, I really don't like being disturbed. So I would love to be, you know, the embodiment of like an unleashed pit bull walking around so that no one talks to me when I don't want to be spoken to. <laughs> um, Nevadia, who is another skeptic, skeptical friend who I've, you know, made connections with online but haven't necessarily met, she has said that her assumption of me is that she wouldn't want to be on my bad side. <laughs> well, it takes, um, it takes quite a lot of time to get on my bad side because I have a habit of making excuses for everybody. Even the worst people in my life, I've made horrendous excuses for. In, in my lineup of who I care about the most, I am at the bottom at all times. <laughs> so it takes a, a long, long time for me to get to the point where I'm on you're on my bad side. It takes a very, very long time. But once once you hit that wall, there is no coming back. I believe in burning bridges and never rebuilding them with people who are just refuse to change and be better. So, I mean, and also I'm not completely against revenge, you know, within the parameters of the law, mostly. But I'm, I, I'm, I advocate for revenge. I think it has its place and I think it's healthy to get revenge. If you can get revenge in, you know, a non mostly legal way. <laughs> it's just what I think. Um, a Shari Pop, yes, you are a little intimidating. <laughs> Well, that probably doesn't make it less so. Um, jewelry Bag says, Asalaamu Alaikum Faye, Eid Mubarak. She said, Eid Mubarak, I hope you're having a wonderful day and um, you got to spend some family time and have some good food. Ramadan, at least in the UK, been long, hard days, long, hard days inside with people you don't necessarily like and you spend a lot of time with anyways. So I hope you've had a good Ramadan. Um, brother, sister, not sure. But um, I hope you've had a good, good Ramadan and I hope your Eid is going well. Um, and you had some good food. I ordered some, I ordered some preemptively. I ordered some yesterday because they had free deliveries on and I wasn't about to not order free delivery food. Um, so I did that yesterday, but, um, yeah, uh, I hope you're having a good, good time. Good Eid time. Uh, next assumption is from Junk Shop Library, who is a regular, he, he tunes into almost all of my shows. Actually, I'm kind of surprised he's not here right now. Um, well, it's two assum assumptions. One is from Junk Shop Library and the other is from Julie and it's the same assumption. And the assumption is, is that he thinks that I could drink him under a table. I could do anything. Because I, I, I used to think that I was not a competitive person. But as I've, in the last five years or so with my growth and now that I can be competitive, I've become more competitive, especially in things that people challenge me in. Like I've done ridiculous things just because people have told me not to do them or have dared me to do them, you know? Um, so when it comes to drinking, I don't necessarily treat it like a sport, but if someone challenges me, I will take them up on it. And whether or not I lose, I know I'm going to have a good time. Um, so there is no losing, really, unless I die. And then, are we really losing? Like, it's not like I'll know. Um, anyways, uh, Cyborg, welcome to the chat. Uh, <laughs> I hope you're doing well, and I hope you're having a good Eid. Um, a Sharipov says, my family doesn't know I left Islam, so I have to put Yeah, that that was my end for a lot of ex-Muslims during Ramadan, is that they would have to pretend with their family um and that's not the best 
you know, situation to be in. Uh, and I, you know, it's over now. So I hope you don't have like any fast to make up or anything like that. Um, and you can just go back to relatively normal with your family. Um, I'm MD. I'm assuming that's Muhammad, but I'm not sure. MD Nirjar, do you celebrate Eid? Um, I do and I don't. I celebrate Eid in the sense that I usually take the day off if there's work. Like right now, there's no work because we're in lockdown. But if there's if if I'm at work, I will take the day off for Eid. Um, I'll go have a meal with my friends. I'll you know have a drink. I'll celebrate. Yeah, why not? Take as many opportunities as you want to celebrate. Life is short. Um, not saying that you should just throw all your eggs in one basket, but you know. If you have a reason or an excuse to celebrate them, why not? Why not? Doesn't mean anything. It's just an excuse to wear some pretty clothes and eat some good food and and drink all of my friends under the table, um, and then hear them complain throughout the morning about how they're hungover instead of just walking it the fuck off. Um, anyways. Uh, Next assumption is from Maddie, and she says you have <laughs> you have a hot boyfriend or girlfriend hiding in your closet. Girl, life would be so much easier if I had one of those. Like, well, that's debatable, I think. But I do not. I am a single woman, and I th I think that that is my default setting. I don't think because my my standards are pretty low for what I consider to be like a match made in heaven for me. Um, in terms of what I expect in, in terms of what I expect in a significant other, it's very much like you, they'll listen to my dumb stories and, you know, they're okay with me doing my own thing from time to time because I'm a very sort of independent person and, um, they will sleep with me and that's pretty much my standard. They don't have to be beautiful. They don't have to be, you know, I don't have to absolutely worship them as people. Like it just, it, it, the bar for me is very low. And so far, apparently no one can meet that standard. Um, I've, I've been on and off dating since last year of like August or something. Um, and I just don't think that maybe relation, I'm cut out for a relationship, but I mean, regardless of what anybody else thinks, anyone I do commit to is going to be hot to me. And that's all that matters, really. Um, a Sharipov says, is the ex-Muslim community big in the UK? I don't know. Uh, there's quite a few of us who are public ex-Muslims here in the UK. Uh, probably not more than those in the US. But I mean, it's, pretty, it's, it's sizable. Uh, I don't know. A big is a very subjective description. Um, but it's sizable. There's quite a few of us. Um, uh, D Sub Subaraj says, Faye, you are really great. I'm Indian. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Saiful Button Tito uh, says, Can you read Bangla? Not very well. <laughs> Not very well. I spent too much time learning Arabic <laughs> to read to learn to read Bangla. My my mom really tried to hammer it into me. There was one Bangla summer where I was living in Bangladesh and I would, in my free time, I would try to teach myself how to read Bangla by picking up newspapers and trying to decipher the language because I, I can pick up a couple of letters, but I really, really cannot read it. If you Maybe if you gave me like five years to read a paragraph, yes, I could read it, but um, no, not really. Um, a serious offer says the internet can make it hard to determine actual numbers as there are definitely more vocal ex-Muslim figures and groups. Um, there, it's very dangerous at the moment, especially in a lot of, especially in about 13 to 11 to 13 countries because it's illegal to be an ex-Muslim. Um, but generally it's not the safest thing in the world to be a pu public ex-Muslim. So it's, we are a sizable minority um, but not everybody comes to like the meetups and the events and stuff like myself. I did not go to any ex-Muslim meetups until like last year when I became an activist. I was an ex-Muslim since 2017, but I never went because I never felt comforting that it was too painful for me to go and ex explore that, you know, new era thing. Um, so yeah, I do think that there are definitely more 
ex-Muslims than we could possibly predict because a lot of ex-Muslims, first of all, they may not know they're ex-Muslims and they may not know that that's a thing. And second of all, it's hard to come out. It's not easy, um, depending on families, obviously. Um, next assumption. Um, <laughs> You're not afraid to slap a bitch when a bitch needs slapping. I wish I could say that that's not true. <laughs> uh, usually I won't go straight to physical violence unless somebody really knows me as a person. <laughs> um, I say physical violence. We're quote, quote, talking like a, a friendly shove here and there. Um, I've definitely shoved some of my closer friends into the ground. I've, I'm very boisterous. I never thought of myself as boisterous before, but I, the more I find out about myself, the more I realize how boisterous I am and how animated I can get as, uh, as angry or as a drunk or even worse, both. Um, so there's definitely that but if someone needs a, a, to be taught a lesson i know how to teach them <laughs> um and i i you know i don't take nonsense sitting down if someone's gonna beeline for you know taking the mick i know how to take the mick back um the next thing is you're a warrior and this world needs more like you i don't know how to take a compliment but thank you um uh, Clarabelle says, you're brave, not afraid to be vulnerable. Vulnerability is something that's underrated in people. Vulnerability gives people and fictional characters, might I add, dimension. Um, it gives a lot of dimension. And if I'm being completely honest with you, if I'm being completely like cards on the table, I have a really, really hard time being vulnerable in real life. Unless I, again, I know you as a person or you are a complete motherfucking stranger that I'm never going to see again. And I know I'm never going to see again, like you're in a different city or a different country. Um, I find it really, really difficult to be vulnerable. I usually keep a lot of feelings to myself. And it was something that I identified as very not productive for me as a human being. And that's one of the reasons why I have this channel is to have like an out, because essentially I'm not talking to people, I'm talking to myself and a camera. You know, it, it makes this experience very one-sided. And I like that because it allows me to address all of my vulnerabilities without like the feeling of I'm burdening somebody else, even though technically that's not how it works. Um, so my, streak of vulnerability on this channel and in person um, has been a very, very recent development and it's something that I'm still trying to dig into because I think it's the only real way to be. I think that people are really limiting themselves by not digging into their own vulnerabilities and seeing either how to change them or how to accept them. Um, you know, if you have time and you want to develop internally, you got to look at those deeper, darker parts of yourself. Um, for example, my time as a closeted ex-Muslim has caused me to become a brilliant liar to the point that it doesn't matter how much alcohol you pump in me, I can behave sober. As sober as a drunk person can be. Um, I have impressed many a parent of some of my Muslim friends with how sober I can be, not because, and they're impressed because I can still behave like a sober person and they'd never know I was drunk, ever. They still don't know. Um, and it's just, you know, I don't know if it's a good thing or not that I can let lies and things like that roll off my tongue so easily. Um, I think that it had its place when I was in a position where I had to use it. But now, especially when it comes to me expressing how I'm feeling, where I am in my life, it's, and because I have all of these mental health issues going on, it can be counterproductive to tell the people closest to me that I'm fine when I'm not. Um, and I do tend to do that a whole lot. It's not good. Um, and it's that internal kind of honesty and that kind of conversation that I think is really, really important to just keep going. Um, anyways, enough of my TED talk. Uh, someone said, uh, I was working in London 2005 to 2009, now in New York, two different countries along US than London. I don't think so. 
I think that London is the greatest city in the world and nothing you say and nothing anyone says can change that opinion. Uh, I think that London's melting pot works very well. I think it does have its own little quirks and things that it could fix. But in general, I think that when we compare London and New York on a news level and in the way that they function at the moment, especially in how people interact with each other, I much prefer London. New York seems like a mean place, a place that I might enjoy for like a week or two weeks, a month even, but it would it will never be London. It will never be London. London has the perfect balance of apathy in the entire world, and I love it. Um, uh, a Sharipov says, I want to come out to my family, but I don't know how and should I even. I think that you need to play it by ear. I don't like advising people on this because I think that everyone's circumstance is different in terms of how the how they work socially in, in their own family. I think that if there is a physical danger, absolutely fucking not. Um, but if your parents are more liberal and more understanding, then I would say come out like test the water by introducing those ideas to them in the form of questions or made up anecdotes about oh I had a friend who like left Islam or like didn't want to get married or you know she doesn't wear hijab anymore like all of those kinds of like bring up those scenarios and see where they stand and I think that that might give you a better image of what they might feel if you were to leave and come out to them um, but it's it's up to you Honestly, it's up. To, I think that you are the best judge of where you stand and how you should act. And ultimately, when I finally came out, it was my need to be authentic, and I had to leave everything behind. And I would not, I would not recommend that to everybody because it's really, it's a clean break, but it's a really tough break. I burned all my bridges back with my family, so if you want bridges, <laughs> that's not the route to take. Um, Jewelry Bag says, I'm a Muslim because it gives my life moral structure and a sense of identity. Sure, <laughs> I'm not going to argue with that. Um, Smile, welcome to the channel, uh, says, no no Muslims want your Eid Mubarak at Faye the Most Gracious. Okay, well, I never said that you needed to accept it. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Um, Safe old button, Tito, uh, do you know something about the abuse child... Call me Madrasha of Bangladesh. Nope. I tend to stay away from horror stories. Um, Rahim Chini, welcome. Um, Cyborg says, and if you got a job or something, then you can make enough for yourself and get away. Okay, they're giving advice to somebody else. Um, uh, Dr. House says, Faye, we love you. Thank you. Welcome to the live stream. Um, Ryan says, hi, Faye, what's your type? I do not have one, but I do find myself being being constantly, constantly chased by very damaged people, and I'm not about it. I don't need more damage. Look at the color of my hair. Look at how I've cut my own hair. Look at these earrings and the makeup on my face. I do not need more damage. There's enough going on here. <laughs> so I would please advise that those of you who are damaged, please, Stop sniffing me out. I don't need your problems because my immediate default is to care and like my syndrome just comes out and I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to fix this person. I'm going to change their lives. No, stay away from me. You're bad for me and I need to not do that. Um, anyways, we're going to move on. Um, Bella, her assumption of me is that I ignore texts a lot of the time. And I do. <laughs> I get to texts, emails, and things like that when I am ready to get to them. I do not like, I'm not one of those people who like immediately respond to you. It really depends the kind of relationship we have. Um, but for the most part, I'm not one of those people who like, if you're texting me for the first time, I'm just going to immediately respond to you because it takes some time for me to like, you know, 
grace the idea that I've received a text and someone is waiting for a response. Um, but yeah, I do, I have a bad habit of ignoring texts and forgetting about them after I've read them. So it looks very rude. Um, Cardiff Atheist says, geeky, smart, likes a good night out, atheist. Um, yes. Depends on the night and depends on my mood, but yes, all of those things. Um, you, <laughs> UFA says, a little aggressive in a good way. I, I guess. I, it depends. Depends if you're on the receiving end of my aggression, I guess. Um, uh, Avienda says, intimidating and queen as fuck, protective older sister who'll punch anyone who tries to mess with me slash us. I mean, yeah, basically. Basically. Again, uh, my, my scale of people who I care about, I'm pretty much at the bottom. I am at the bottom. It's not even pretty much. I am at the bottom. So if like if someone comes for me, I'll be less reluctant to what did she say? Punch anyone. <laughs> I'll be less reluctant to do that. But if it's someone that I really, really care about, really, really respect, or someone I have a relationship with, um, yeah, I I fully go into like how fucking dare you mode. Um, not my best feature, but you know. Uh, I'm going to get back into some of the comments. Um, Rahim Chini says, I'm Bika Srivastava. I never know how to pronounce that. I'm so sorry. I changed my name because I got bullied on YouTube too. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, Safe All Button says, every day more than 10, 10 millions of children of Bangladesh have be abused by his religion teacher at Kalmi Madrasha. I work for them. Uh, you should probably reach out to an organization that can actually help with that then. Uh, there's not much I can do about that except talk about it. And my reach is very, very, at the moment, no one's happy with me. But um, I would say that you should reach out to people and organizations who can actually help with that. Um, is critiquing Islam Islamophobia? No. Uh, how much longer does Islam have left, do you think? I don't know. I think I think in about a thousand years it will become like a mythology. Um, it's about it. <laughs> I think that ultimately all of these religions will fade away and they'll be replaced by new ones because I think that humanity's default is if you can't um, find an answer to something, you just, you just glue an answer on and see if it fits and sticks. Um, but yeah, that's what I think. Uh, it's Islam just, it will die out <laughs> eventually. Uh, religion itself, I don't think will go away. And I think that that's the crux of the problem. But I also think that it's a, an unrealistic expectation for anyone to think that religion will fade away. Um, I think the answer is to take everything a little less seriously because life is not that serious. Um, next assumption is I think you are the most, the most though person, I'm not sure what that word is meant to be, thorough or thought person, I don't know, and a superwoman. I watched your whole story on Abdullah Samira's YouTube channel. I have an immense respect for you. Thank you, Malik. Um, Jeff. Jeff Cooper or um, the blue collar heathen says, I assume you're aware it's tricky to rock a rhyme to rock a rhyme that's right on time. <laughs> it's a good song. Um, 42 or Galvaxatron says, you hog the blanket at night, I'll forgive you someday. I don't hog the blanket at night because I'm very warm blooded and I do not like the heat. So if anything, I kick the blanket off the bed. And that's more annoying than hugging it because you would have to get up and go and get it. Um, Bella also says that you snore. I do. She also says you overthink. I do. Um, Vicky, who's one of my closest friends, she's known me for like six years. She goes, when I first met you, I assumed that you had never been to a Wagamama's and your phone is always on silent. Uh, I went to a Wagamama's for the first time last year. <laughs> to everyone's surprise. I'm sorry, I didn't go to restaurants before I left Islam. It wasn't a family thing we did. We we were capable of making our own food at home. 
having to pay people to do that. Um, so, yeah, I understand the appeal, don't get me wrong, but when I was younger, I just thought, like, I didn't get it. My brain did not understand it. Like, what's the point? I can I can make that exact thing at home. Um, but no, I, I hadn't been to a Wagamama's until last year. Wagamama's, for those of you who aren't in the UK or in London, I don't even know if they have them in the in the rest of the UK. It's just like a it's like a fusion restaurant. They do like Japanese, um, like Far Eastern food. Um, and my phone is always on silent because I don't answer my text messages. And I often miss my phone calls um, because I believe that if it's really important, people will leave a voicemail and I'll, I'll, I can ring them. I like doing things on my terms. Um, we're gonna check back in. Uh, uh, Wojtech Mikkel, I don't know if I pronounced that right at all. Uh, in a hundred years, we would live in artificial reality. I think we already are living in an artificial reality. You certainly can't prove we're not living in an artificial reality. Um, but I mean, there are so many artificial aids to our life right now. It's basically an artificial reality, isn't it? Um, again, like, I don't really care for it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, Seifal says, no, no, I don't need any help, but I think you should know about those children anyway. Watching your live, thank you. Okay. Uh, Ryan says, my assumption is you don't like football. I like football too much. Um, the problem is, is that anything, the moment I get included into a group, I so treat it like it's a religion. And I believe that sport is a type of religion. The way that football being soccer, uh, for those of you non-UK people, um, I'd, I used to follow um, football quite religiously <laughs> before. I, my team was Arsenal. Um, and I supported them since I was a little kid until I stopped watching it. And the reason I stopped watching it was because it was making me so tribal about my team and who I hated. Um, and the team that I hated the most, and I still feel like I hate them, is Tottenham Hotspur. Can't stand them. I don't understand their mascot. It, I, I hate them and one of the reasons why I stopped watching football was because of this like it was making me too concerned with with football like I was football crazy and I stopped watching it I also stopped playing it um I do kind of want to start playing it again but again if somebody puts me in like a league I'm gonna kill everybody because I'm too competitive or I'm gonna get like I'm gonna break all of my limbs because I get so competitive in in like that environment um but if I can just find like a casual team where we just have like five players and a goal post that's fine then I can just play for fun um but football is something that I was like Hikey addicted to even after like after I um, left Islam and I started dating and things um, people who supported Tottenham Hotspur once I found that out it just killed that person for me I just could not look at that person in the same way I just couldn't it didn't work for me um, so yeah I mm, it's not my favorite it's I don't know I do want to get back into it because I've actually met a lot of people who who had that same obsession with football, but I don't know if I would still support Arsenal. Um, I supported Arsenal because that's where my mom's, some of my mom's family lived and, and their main rivals were Tottenham Hotspur. Um, so, yeah. Drew Bag says, experiments with quantum entanglement and the recent discovery of the Higgs field at CERN suggest that we live in a matrix and all matter and thoughts are entangled within it. This, this, people smarter than me are probably right. Um, uh, Ryan says, could, you could join a women's Sunday league. So all of the women's leagues in my area play to win. They don't play for fun. And if they play to win, somebody's legs are getting broken. I can't play in a team if the goal is to win. <laughs> I can play in a team if the goal is to just have fun, because then nobody's getting hurt. I don't care if I lose. But, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, 
what's your favorite social media platform and why my favorite social media platform is youtube because i spend way too much time on it and there's just endless things of content and entertainment on it um aside i don't really like any other social media platforms like i don't really like twitter i used to enjoy it at the beginning um i've enjoyed it less and less because i realized the only reason i enjoyed it was because i was addicted to it so i try to limit my experience on Twitter as much as I can. Um, Instagram, the problem I have with Instagram is that I don't know where time goes when I'm on it. Like I can I can start using it and start liking people's photos, um, but I will be on there for hours just looking at pictures. Like I'm a, a domestic cat or something. Um, so I don't like using it very much because of that. Most of the time, all of my social media is on selfish mode where I just say what I have to say and do what I have to do. And then I just leave. Um, like a lot of people will be like, Hey, did you see my new Instagram photo? Just assume it's no, because if I spend time on Instagram, my whole life is just going to leave me. Um, you can support Man United now instead. <laughs> no, never lived in Manchester and I don't intend to. So I will never support Manchester United. That's how that works for me. Um, Sean Basie, welcome uh, to the live stream. We're doing, we're reading some assumptions people have about me and just having like a relaxed Sunday. Um, next assumption is oh, just smart people saying that they don't have assumptions. I'm not impressed by your observation that you don't make assumptions. Everyone makes assumptions and I want to know what yours were. Um, as someone else said, I hate to say FGM, which is female genital mutilation. Please feel, to, please feel free to ignore this. I, I have not had that performed on me. I do not. But yeah, I, I'm not. No, I have my genitals have not been mutilated, but thank you for asking. Um, Hass says, you're a Somali. <laughs> I'm not. I spent a lot of time in the Somali community. I spent a lot of years in Somali mosques. Um, so that is why my energy can read as Somali, but I am in fact Bangladeshi. I went to many adoksi. I met, I ate plenty of biris and basto and <laughs> anjero, and I miss that food. So if there are any Somali ex Muslims in my area, please do mail me some. Um, but I'm not Somali. Uh, I find it funny that you would assume that I was. Um, Einar Nis Jensen says, you prefer Marvel before DC. So here's my thing about Marvel and DC. My favorite thing in all of this superhero thing is X-Men. I love X-Men the most. Um, because I feel like there are a lot of interesting characters, a lot of like really layered and deep characters. There's like clear conflict and like you can't really disagree or agree with any of the ideas that go around because some things work and some things don't. And that's what I love about X-Men. Um, and they're my favorite thing of everything. But I was introduced to DC first. I used to watch a lot of the DC cartoons and I still think that the DC cartoons are really, really good, like Justice League and a lot of the Batmans. Um, but in terms of movies, Marvel takes, the, it's not even a competition. DC's movies are awful. Um, I watched the Dark Knight trilogy last year because your girl had like a 10 year blackout where I watched absolutely nothing because I was a fundamentalist. Um, and I still don't think that the Dark Knight trilogy stacks up to a lot of Marvel movies. I love, I, don't get me wrong, I love the second one because of Heath Ledger. Um, I love Christian Bale, but I just don't think that he was a very good Batman. Um, so I, I do have a love for DC, but I love the cartoons more than any, any of the movies. Like the cartoons are great. Um, but I, I love them pretty equal. Well, that's not true. I know more about Marvel if I'm being completely honest. Like, I don't have as much of an interest in DC. I know a lot more about Marvel. Not a lot, because I'm not that much of a nerd, but, um, you know, a passable nerd. Uh, the Infidel says, you're a very strong-minded person, but maybe not so romantic. It depends who I'm with. I can be anything you want me to be. <laughs> um, 
Anyways, uh, Sean. As I said, well, everything's censored to an extent. There's, there's not much you can do about it. I, in terms of like, if you're looking for a less censored platform, you'd probably find it on YouTube, even though they have their ways of censoring things. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's, that's, censorship is not too much of an issue for me. Um, the, it could be worse. That's my thought on that. Um, Raheem Chini says, what's your thought on recent Pakistan airplane crash? I don't know too much about it, so I really don't want to comment about it. Uh, Sirius Duffer says, they are liars. Everyone makes assumptions. So <laughs> exactly. Um, I like Twitter to watch people fight over God. I'm so tired of the argument. I honestly think it's a dumb argument. I think it's a stupid argument and I'm so over it because no one's ever going to reach a conclusion. And to me, if you can't reach a conclusion, it's a dumb argument. Um, uh, DC suffers from the fact that their animation department is awesome, but Warner Brother controls all the live action material and they suck. Yes, actually, I agree with that. I think because DC, DC has some of the most raw, um, like dark, things in it like the characters and the backstories the villains especially in batman there's so many dark elements to it i think they should stop trying to cater to marvel's like family friendly content they need to they need to boost their rating up to like an r and that's i feel like that's the only way they're going to save that franchise i really really think that they should stop catering to like kids and families like they, they constantly try to get that 12a label it's not for dc when you read the comics it, it really, really is not for children or, like, it's not for anyone 12 years old with an adult. Like, it just isn't. Um, I think they need to kick their ratings up to R and they need to go in with the violence and the dark themes and, you know, all of that. I, I, I think they're doing themselves a disservice by trying to cater to children. Um, Ali Al-Fadi, who's Al-Fadi? I don't know who Al-Fadi is, um, but feel free to link him to me in the comments and I'll check him out later. Uh, A. Sharipov says, favorite sci-fi book genre? Um, sci-fi book genre? My favorite book genre is dark fantasy. That's my favorite. Um, like my favorite thing in the whole world is Berserk and Mm, barring that, I love the Witcher series. I love any anything dark fantasy. I'm into anything remotely involving um, Norse mythology. Into all here for it. Um, Post apocalyptic book. I don't know. I feel like a lot of them are geared towards um, like young adults and teens. So I used to like The Hunger Games a lot, but I don't think it's aged very well. I do have it in my shelf because I've read that first book quite a few times. Um, because I I thought, like initially on first reading, I didn't really like Suzanne Collins' style of writing, but I was interested by it. So I kept reading it to see if it like hit differently a second and third time. It really doesn't. Um, but I don't really know. I have I, I think that there are a lot of post-apocalyptic or apocalyptic um, ideas that really aren't explored well. And I think people could do a better job at it. I wrote a fiction about um, cannibals. I'll see if I, I, I still have that story actually, because I also read stories on my channel, but that's a really interesting um, concept that I came up with and I think that well, I don't know I think that like the zombies and the like the the I don't know like the end of world kind of concept the nuclear stuff like it's cool but it's so overdone I would like to see like a new style of um apocalypse if that makes sense um so yeah uh so you still like Berserk or do you think the recent years have let down the manga? I don't think the recent years have let it down. I think I think one of the reasons why I like Kintaro Miura and um, the way in which he's like based um, his work 
is that he is allowing for himself to take breaks and then continue writing. And I think that that shows growth within himself as long as growth within his work. And I don't think that it has been let down. I think that the golden age had its charm and that's what initially drew me in, but I'm so invested in the story. And there's very, very little that Kintaro Miura can do with the story that would make me uninterested in it. I think that the way he's developing the characters um, really, really shows his growth as a writer and um, an artist, and I really, really like that. So I do not think that the lat the later years of Berserk and the way that things have gone in the story have changed much for me in terms of me considering it my favorite thing in the entire world. It will always be my favorite thing in the entire world, I think, anyway. Um, um, do you watch any series on Netflix? I have been, okay, no. <laughs> I, I try not to watch series uh, because I have an obsessive personality. And if I start a series, you, your girl is not gonna sleep until she's finished it. Um, I just got out of finishing re-watching Two Broke Girls on Amazon Prime. And I love that show. I think it's one of the, I, I'm so upset that they canceled it. Um, I think a few years ago because Max Black is completely me. She is she is me, maybe to a slightly more turned up degree, but she's basically me. Um, so I love that show. Uh, I'm gonna start watching New Girl because right now I, I need fun stuff to watch. I don't wanna watch anything too serious. And I usually do fall back on more serious like series, if I'm being completely honest, like The Handmaiden's Tale, Vikings is another one I can watch any time of day. I love that show. Um, mainly because of um, Travis Fimmel's Ragnar Lothbrok. I think he's, that character is one of the most well captured characters on screen, in my opinion. Um, other ones, um, not Orange is the New Black, although that's an okay show as well. I'm not, I'm not mad at that show. Um, Orphan Black. Orphan Black is a good show. I think it's still on Netflix in the UK. But I watched that a few years ago and I, I'm thinking about re-watching it because I really liked how that story kept me guessing. Um, so yeah, those are the ones that I can recommend. I don't know. I'm going to watch New Girl though because it's light and easy and fun and it's Zoe Deschanel. Like, it's mindless. That's what I need right now. Um, going back to assumptions though, um, We have, um, you have a mind of your own. You observed and saw that despite intimidation, it was better to live a free life than that accepted the 21st century rather than be a slave of the seventh. That's not an assumption, that's who I am. <laughs> um, uh, Kazi says, you are so innocent, but by looks so unkind. I don't know what that means. I don't think I look innocent <laughs> or unkind. I look crazy, um, and you would be right to assume that I was. Uh, but innocent, I'm innocent in the ways that I don't know a lot of things, and I'm learning a lot of things. Uh, but innocent in the way that I have never done anything, and I I'm mean and I'm angry and stuff. I don't think that I don't think that sticks. Uh, Lance says, I guess that I've just always wanted to know. So no real assumptions. You guys are honestly my heroes and I hope I can do what you do one day. Okay, thank you. Um, Masiek, I don't know how to, that's a Polish name. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, he said, brave, independent, a bit showing off, one face for the public, another for friends. Social media are full of hateful people, people triggered by you. So I think that's a good strategy to keep them at bay. But if that was me, I'd feel exhausted inside. Um, I think that from time to time I do put a face on, but for the most part, what you see is what you get in real life. I think that people who've met me in real life after seeing me on the internet can probably vouch for that. Um, but if I'm being completely honest, like sometimes the hatred kind of just glides off, uh, because I'm numb to it. Um, you know, I've definitely heard worse and things have things have been worse from people who are closer to me. So when it comes from like complete strangers on the internet, it doesn't really translate to me that I should be hurt 
or taken aback by this. And again, I don't know if that is something that is a good thing, but I'm using it to my advantage. So that's what, you know. Um, Hans Yalbert says, a previously suppressed person that has recently emerged out of it completely. <laughs> um, being comfortable in your skin and brave enough to put yourself in harm's way, was curious and confident enough to take ridicule and detractors head on without letting the hate get to you. Good experiment. Okay, thanks. Don't know how to take a compliment. Um, Jim Bojo says, I assume you're more humble than your talents suggest you ought to be. I'm not humble. I'm just honest. Like, I'm pretty mediocre at everything. I don't think that's me being humble. Um, I dabble in a lot of things and I try to, um, you know, I try to learn as much as I can about one thing. But once I'm like, okay at it like I can use it as a party trick I'm kind of done I'm over it um a few things that I've have always kind of stuck is like with my artwork and with my writing I've always tried to improve but when it comes to other stuff like my Arabic so mediocre so mediocre like it's not even worth talking about it's not something that I should be identified by because it's awful but it's mediocre um other stuff like uh dancing singing very mediocre. I have a karaoke on my channel where I sing like every single one of my favorite Linkin Park songs. It is a terrible idea to watch it, so do not. But if you want to laugh, go for it. Um, very mediocre at almost everything. I don't think I'm too humble about it. I, th I think I, 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 I am mediocre so that I can have bragging rights about something that I'm mediocre at. Um, Timola says, uh, regarding islam you took the red pill and saw reality i mean sure <laughs> um v says a strong independent woman fierce woman who's also a hottie yeah, that's, all of that is up for interpretation like all of that is subjective is secretly shira who is shira i'm gonna have to google that Oh, it looks like a cartoon character. Oh, this was the one that people were complaining about, like the way that she's been drawn. Oh, I've never been that blonde. I wish I was that blonde. Um, isn't that from like He-Man or something? I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna look through uh, the comments. Um, Black Mirror is a good show. Black Mirror is a good show. Uh, Raheem Chini says, do you watch Hindi movies? Nope, I find them silly and I don't have time to yell at the screen sometimes. <laughs> um, have you watched Death Note? Uh, yes, I have. I've also read the whole uh, manga. I love Death Note. I think it's one of the better uh, animes or slash mangas that I've ever seen or read. Um, and I really like it. I've rewatched it many times. I do enjoy Death Note. Have I been kicked out? No, you have not. Um, do you get hate from other fierce like Hindus or Christians as well? I get hate from everybody. <laughs> I get hate from everybody. It doesn't matter what ideology they have. I always have a way of getting under somebody's skin. Um, Jewelry Bag says, you remind me of a more sophisticated, refined Sheikh Hasina. I think you should be the next leader of Bangladesh. No, do not make me in charge of that mess because I will burn it to the ground. It, it's, a, it's a country made of water, but I will find a way. Um, Dolly Rizki says, anyway, Faye, do you still go to college? I just discovered your channel a few weeks ago. Your channel is interesting because I'm also an ex-Muslim. Um, I am currently in university, but it's mostly an online course. So, yeah. Uh, I'm currently in university. I'm studying social psychology. And I'm aiming to take that to a level where I can work with young people. Um, so yeah, uh, but yeah. <laughs> um, Ahmed09 says, you're very simple. Yes, I am here and here. Um, Mary Cat says, hello, fresh. <laughs> Zara K is here, welcome. If you wanna come join me, by the way, feel free to, I'll send you the link. Um, not me because I love you. What do you mean? I don't know what that means. 
I don't know what I was saying when you commented that. Um, Rahim says, I'm a Hindu, but I don't hate you. Virtual hug. Thank you. Um, Mary Cat says, an ex-Muslim here. Great. Um, uh, a Sharipov says, do you work out? I think you should, if I may. I am a casual worker outer. I don't like going to the gym very much. It's not my thing favorite place in the world. I like doing it in company. Um, I like doing it in company. So if I go with like my work husband or I go with my friends, then it's not too bad. I like more involved uh, ways of working out. So I like swimming. I like rock climbing. I like team sports. Um, I like getting all of my aggression out. So that's the way that I work out. Uh, I like dancing. Like that's the way that I would say that I work out. I also do like small stretches and warm-ups and stuff like that at home but it's not like I'm not a absolute workout junkie that's uh, that's never going to be me I'm sorry I've always been a, a big girl I've always been you know my my strength comes from my will to do things not necessarily because I am a strong physically strong person <laughs> um so yeah um that, that's what I would say to that. Uh, Zara K says, I don't give you hate because I love you all my love. Um, of course, Zara K is the most loving of my friends. <laughs> uh, sometimes she can be a lot, but she is the most loving of my friends. Uh, let me send you the link. Hold on. Uh, I can send it to you through WhatsApp and you can come join me. We've been talking about our my, everyone's assumptions about me, by the way. Um, but yeah, uh, Dolly Rizki says, is there anything good about Islam Fair? Um, there are things that, like disciplines I learned when I was a Muslim that I think that are good for me. I don't know if they work in the same way. Like there are certain mantras like patience, patience is a good thing, patience is a virtue. And, you know, um, well, actually, I think the exact phrasing is a lot is with the patient. Um, but I, I, you know, I like that. I'm, I'm a very stoic person um, generally. So stoicism is something that I take very, very seriously. And I, I love the idea of patience and resilience and, you know, being mentally and physically tough. Um, but if off the top of my head, is there anything specifically good to, in Islam? I guess the one thing that I would say is the, is the charity aspect of it. Um, like you're encouraged to give uh, to those less fortunate. Uh, but other than that, not that I can think of, really. Um, Aisharipo says, I used to be almost obese. I was also casual, but it never worked for me. One day I made up my mind and lost three times my weight. Workout is good for your brain health as well. Um, yeah, I know. That's what, why I originally started doing, um, that's why I originally started doing all those kinds of stuff, why I started working out, why I started um, doing more active things. But for me, it's very much a social thing as well. Um, so yeah, um, keeping on brand and on theme and we keep going with the assumptions. Um, Osama R says, I'm out there to prove a point and loud enough to be noticed. Yeah, that's pretty much my brand. I'm here to make some noise <laughs> and that's about it. <laughs> um, uh, Seeker says you chose self-respect over imaginary fairy tale okay um you want attention yes i do make me famous like share subscribe um there are other links in the description oh it's e today i would really appreciate people buying stuff off my amazon wish list as a present for me if you want to of course like i'm not i'm not going to refund that's like the one and only time that i'm giving a refund um so yeah um but yeah, there are links in the description if you want to follow me on my other social medias, if you want to look at other stuff that I've worked on or been in. And, you know, you want to follow me in other places. You want to stalk me elsewhere. Um, Dawood Suleiman says, strong-minded and independent, well-spoken. 
thank you. I wouldn't assume, I, I would never make that assumption on a first impression about me. Um, Hi Mama says, brave and strong-willed, I know you on Twitter and I am for forever in awe of how you left your old life and Islam to be your true self. And Gerald Helmet says, I assume your farts smell of roses. They do not. They never have. And then... <laughs> Uh, I do not know if Zara K will be joining us, but I have sent her the link, so if she does, she will. Um, uh, Rahim Chini says, what time is it there? It is 8.46, so it's almost 9 o'clock. I'm going to put the charger on because my computer is dying. Um, Dolly Rizki says, I feel oppressed here in India. Why, Dolly? Why are you oppressed in India? In Indonesia, sorry. I read that wrong. Um, Introverted Smile says, ex-Muslim Eid Mubarak, I miss giving out and receiving money on Eid, so here goes. Cheers. See, like, giving out and receiving money was never a thing in my family. Never. It was never a thing in my family. Not once has it been a thing in my family to give out money. Like, I never used to receive uh, money on Eid. Sometimes my aunts would give me like a new colored scarf and that would be my present for Eid. Um, but never money. It was never something that uh, that used to come my way. I don't know why. But thank you. Thank you for the donation, Introverted Smiles. I very much appreciate it. And Eid Mubarak to you too. I hope you're having a good day and you've had some good food because that is the best thing about Eid. Um, we're also going to look at some assumptions that people made about Zara Kay since she was here. And I don't know if she's still watching or if she wants to join me in the live stream. But I would love to do that if she wants to come and react to people's assumptions about her. She got a couple of tweets. Um, and Saf was the first one to respond to her, from what I can tell. And she said, you're intimidating and badass. And also this girl tweets so much, like, does she ever sleep? And could also take any man in a fight. That is basically Zara. <laughs> She's not intimidating. When you meet her in person, she has a lot of energy. It's good energy, but it's a lot of energy. So if you if you have like a low tolerance for that, you can be overwhelmed very, very quickly. She's not very intimidating, but she is she doesn't know how to stand her ground. And if you get in a fight with her, you will lose. No doubt. You will lose. Um Ian Bellis Ian Ian. Ian Bellis says. Um, that Zara's politics broadly follow a centre-right trend. She will have to answer for that. I have no idea how to answer that. Uh, Atheistic Scorpio. Uh, Zara is also a Scorpio, by the way. Uh, Atheistic Scorpio says that Zara loves spaghetti. I don't think she hates spaghetti. I think she enjoys spaghetti. Zara, do you love spaghetti? Mum, spaghetti? Um, D. Jarvis says... Zara is assertive, not aggressive, as some would see you. Two very different words and meaning. You are also strong and brave and example to other young people. It depends on the time of day. Zara is assertive most of the time, but I've seen her aggressive as well. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the French name. I do not know how to pronounce that. I'm French and I like your secular side. Otherwise, he's talking about Zara. I like Zara's secular side, otherwise you, Zara is a beautiful woman with a lot of character. Zara knows what she wants and that's good, she's strong. On the other hand, I don't know if Zara would manage to accept orders in, a, in the professional world or give, or then give orders only. Um, Zara has mad manager energy. Like, she's very much go, go, go. Well, she runs her own charity at the moment, Faithless Hijabi, um, and she she has like the character to be a very very good leader. Um, so I would like to see the growth of that in future. Uh, Ian Reed says that Zara is a fearless warrior. Not wrong. Uh, Penstriped Lagoon says it depends if Zara is looking for serious answers or silly ones because I have both in spades, and he didn't give us any. Um, 
Mars, Sh uh, Mars Chung says Zara is a kickboxer and can kick ass. She's done um, Muay Thai. Muay Thai, I think that's how it's said. She's done some martial arts. Um, and I think she's done boxing as well. So, yeah. Uh, Nick Kano says you could put a jihadi in a choke hold in two seconds flat. If she was taller, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are all the assumptions people had in terms of Zara. Um, Maxwell Akate says, why do you look happier than being in Islam? Uh, because I'm doing what I want to do now, I guess. Um, Raheem Chini says, I've seen Zara been, uh, been great at catfighting. Her tweet's always hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I don't really have much else to do unless someone else is willing to join me. And so far, there haven't been the most, there, have, there hasn't been clamor from my crew to come and join me in the live stream. Um, so I might actually close out because we've been going on for over an hour. But I hope you've had a good time with me, just having some fun and chilling out. And, you know, I actually didn't drink any of this. So I guess we have another day. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, I hope that you in just had a good time. I hope that you've had a good Eid. I mean, I've had a pretty relaxed one. I did a live stream earlier today on the Rage channel. Uh, we talked to Ali of Leaving Islam, who is a pretty prolific ex-Muslim Twitter user who posts stories, ex-Muslim stories. Um, so if you haven't followed them, you should. Uh, and if you haven't seen that live stream, you should. Um, if you liked hanging out with me and you had a good time, please remember to like, um, subscribe and share if you feel like you want to share my channel and all that stuff. I am trying to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And, um, yeah, I hope you've had a good day. Thank goodness Ramadan is over and everyone can kind of relax, even though we are still in the middle of a global pandemic. It's, this will make it a bit better that, this will make things a little better for people who have been trapped inside their homes and starving all day. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow. We have a video. I did a video with Simon and Vicky where we ranted about Game of Thrones for about two hours. So I need to go and edit that down to, you know, a more consumable video without all the ums and ahs. So yeah, we'll, we'll, have that going on tomorrow and I hope you tune in for that because it'll be a fun it'll be a fun time um as always I hope that you have you know an okay time in the pandemic I know it's difficult today has been day 71 for me it's not the best um but yeah thanks and I will see you on the flip side see you tomorrow <laughs>